Um, welcome back um, after your evening session, but the but tea. Um, this session is basically I just want to ask questions, um, which I got from the students also and some instruments also, so that we can get appropriate. Uh, answer from our resource persons. Um, if the answer is not clear to me, I, I will ask more questions so that it becomes clear. Yeah? Okay, first uh, I want, I'd like to ask uh, Charlie Bai, uh, <coughs> what is it that you like the most? What is it that you like the most and what benefit has it brought to you? <laughs> um, <clears throat> where to begin? Uh, <laughs> I would say that what I've liked the most is personal meetings with Bob Dada. Personal meetings with personal Bob Dada. Personal meeting with Bob Dada. Because, okay. um, I mean, when you really think that, you know, Shiv Baba is God, Brahma Baba is Adam, Brahma, the number one human soul, and to have the honour of meeting them and having blessings from them, I think that was the most unique and powerful spiritual experience. And I just every time I met Baba, I felt so high not just from what Baba said, but um, Baba's drishti. <clears throat> and Baba just knows how to fill the heart with everything. Mm -hmm. And once I, once there was actually a, um, fin the meeting was finishing, <clears throat> you know how they feed Baba. And um, so they were feeding Baba and then they packed up all the tins and Baba was giving drishti to Daddyji, Nibirbhai, mm -hmm. etc. You know, how before Baba takes leave. And then Baba stopped and called over Muni Ben and um, asked her for something. She came with a big tin of toli and Baba called me up and he gave me a whole tin of toli. A whole tin? A whole tin. Oh, wow. <laughs> And he said, share it with your friends. <laughs> but what I'm saying, just, you know, that's why it was, Baba just fills the soul with so much love and respect that the past goes, the problems go, the weaknesses go. I think that's Baba's, that's what I like most. So. Yeah, that's a wonderful experience, isn't it? To get some, a tin of toli <laughs> from God. <laughs> <laughs> Kim Brandon, um, what about your choice and experience? For me, two things comes to my mind. <laughs> One is punctuality and discipline. I like these two values very much in my life, before also, after Gyan also, because it just let me have real freedom. Okay, so we can see that Melanin Mel Mel is very punctual and what's the other one? Discipline. Discipline, yeah, very discipline. Um, next question What is your best speciality? And why do you think it is your best speciality? I'm going to ask Mira. But yeah, maybe Mira Ben first. Yeah. <laughs> uh, for me, it is enthusiasm because I feel that it's the energy of enthusiasm that drives you constantly and uh, makes you have a constant progress. So it's an energy, it's a blood, it's oxygen, it's everything. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense, right? Without enthusiasm, there's no life. <laughs> For Brahmins, without enthusiasm, there's no life. Okay, Charlie, bye. I think contentment. 
for me and probably the blessing I got from Baba more than any other blessing was contentment. And I, <clears throat> I just feel that makes the heart feel full and you feel quite easy. Um, when I feel content, I feel quite easy inside and easy with other people, um, which I feel is really important. Mm. Okay, so this is also very interesting. And whatever I have, enough for me. But, but enthusiasm was, the more I have, the more I want. Uh, more will be the, my ability to be able to just anything. All right. Uh, next question. What was the incident or situation where you have done an act that makes you feel that you are such a worthy of worship soul and it increases your self-respect tremendously. So your turn, Salima. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> Can you repeat the question, please? Okay. No, yeah. What was the incident or the situation where you have done an act that makes you feel that you are such a worthy of worship? So you yourself feel that you're such a great person <laughs> and increases your self respect tremendously. Goodness. <laughs> <laughs> I, or anything. <laughs> yeah, um, honestly, nothing really comes to mind, but I know yeah. that when I feel I give regard to people, mm -hmm. respect, see people's specialties, I feel much better, you know, inside. And I, I just feel that's the culture that Baba's created. And Brother Ken once um, referred, he said, you know, there's all these systems, a democracy, it's a system, theocracy is a system run by religious people, etc. Baba's system is a respectocracy. Mm -hmm. And that's really how Baba's system works. I think that he gives so much regard and it's just a world where it's the opposite people are always taking each other down, I think, for self-respect. And I remember actually when Daddyji left the body, Baba in all the Borg messages gave two specialties. Was often I felt Brahma Baba's formula for perfection was incorporeal, egoless, and viceless. Daddyji's was self-respect and respect. And I think that um, when there's self-respect, we can value everyone. And that's when things work, I think, in the Brahman family, when we, we value others. That's when everything seems to have a really good vibration to it. Mm. Um, thanks, Talibai. I, I also feel that, you know, whenever there is someone who has been going through a process where nobody respects him, um, people look down upon the person, and there you are. You are. You met the met the person and talked to the person, and you appreciated the person so much. For one reason is you are willing to listen what he has to say, and second reason is you gave the person such a respect that that person was is so happy and looking at that. I have changed the energy of this person. So that give, give, give you a uh, tap on your back that, wow, great man, you, not, you are not ordinary. <laughs> yeah. Miraman? Um, I was just remembering one incident that happened in 1978 when I was in Guyana and uh, the other side of the world, especially in Fiji, you know, um, 
<clears throat> in those areas, people uh, have gone from India, from North India. Most of them are Bhojpuri, uh, North Indians, and they have so much love for India. So I went to give a talk in uh, Gita Yagya. And, uh, you know, they were so happy and so happy to just see me uh, from Bharat because they feel like Bharat has come seeing me. And each one of them come close to me and say, can I touch your feet? Uh, because they felt like touching my feet is like touching Bharat land. You know, like they have not come back to Bharat after 100 years, but to see a Bharat Varsi for them it already, it's a great privilege. They feel so honored, but uh, everyone wanted to touch the feet and feel like they are touching the land of Bharat and seeing their feelings for the motherland. It gave me so much of intoxication that uh, you know, in this last birth also, uh, I took birth in Bharat. This body was made in Bharat. And so people have so much respect for the land of Bharat, the earth of Bharat, that wherever you go, wherever there is Bharat Vasi, they see you with a vision of being someone who was a deity before, <laughs> even though we may not have become yet, but that kind of vision, especially, uh, you know, those Bharatvasis who have been uh, taken by British people to other parts of the world, not only in Fiji, in, in Suriname, in Guyana, in Trinidad, so much of respect as if they want to worship you, but of course, you know, we don't allow them to put garland on things like that. But the feeling of respect for India is expressed through us. So that was a wonderful feeling. <laughs> yeah, that's a wonderful experience too. Mm -hmm. um, next aspect is um, the question is, what is considered as bullying in BK lifestyle? What should a BK do if they get bullied by another book, BK or instruments? I'm looking at Charlie Bai here. <laughs> <laughs> because this subject, Hello, we yeah. don't talk about it too much. <laughs> It's not spoken so much in Eastern, yeah. Eastern part. So Charlie Bai has Charlie Bai has more experience of yeah, that. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think, in a sense, it's a question of power. You know, in life, some people have a position, a role, a responsibility, and sometimes, you know, in a way, one has to become very humble to use that power in an appropriate way. But sometimes it's misused by forcing people, coercing people, even intimidating people. You have to do this and you have to do this in the way I think it should be done. Or even I would say teasing too much. Um, yeah, it's, it's in a way I think... Um, not really respecting another individual. So, and though I would say in this world, <clears throat> there's a lot of legislation now all over the world in all countries against bullying. But on the other side, you know, sometimes you just say one word to somebody and they say, you're bullying me. You know, so it's just, um, so sometimes too, on the other hand, perhaps, because of the nature of the time, there's so much body consciousness, people are so sensitive, can't hear anything from anyone. But generally, I think bullying is more a misuse of power and sort of dominating, forcing, coercing, intimidating others to do what I feel they should be doing. You know, I think Baba's ways bring people close. 
Like we were talking a little bit this morning, I think real leadership is not controlling, it's influencing. No, no one likes control these days, nobody. That's my experience in any culture, in any part of the world, no one likes control. But when the, you come close, there's love and respect, you will influence them. That's how I saw the daddy's work. When people come close, then they influence how you know, they encourage them and you feel loved and respected. I just want to add one word. Recently, uh, Moini Ben was sharing, you know, uh, together with the word influence. Uh, she said to use the word inspiration because sometimes the word influence can be misunderstood by people, isn't it? Okay. It could be taken in a negative, negative way. way. Yes. Uh, so uh, actually, Dadis inspired us through their leadership to become their leaders like themselves, right? Uh, they did not make followers. <laughs> so I think also the reason why bullying is mostly used in Western world is because of the anti-authority, right? Uh, so there is a feeling of fear of authority <laughs> and so could be possible. I have not heard that much in the Eastern part of the world. Maybe now it is the influence of the West is coming. Otherwise, because of the family oriented life and uh, some kind of uh, culture, uh, that word is not being used. Even when we are brought up, we never heard those words, even in our college days. Only after coming to Gyan, I'm hearing this, that too, in the past few years only. All these 50 years, I never heard. Uh, so that shows it's just a kind of a Western influence uh, that, you know, when you become totally independent and individualistic, so then maybe it could be a kind of uh, ego that confront you. So whatever it is in the issue of bullying, there's a party who is hurt. So where will they go to solve this, this problem? If they are hurt immediately, where will they have to go? You know, I think in um, Baba's system, there's always somebody that they can go to. And like, you know, our system is you do go to the seniors, and if it's a, one of them, you can go to an NC or you can go to an RC. You can register. And I do think that, you know, to, if we have a proper complaint system, it works well. If you look at most organizations these days, most religions, there's a proper system that if there is a genuine complaint, I lodge it somewhere. And there's a group of souls who try to investigate that so that there's a good outcome for all parties. Because the problem is if things aren't solved, they seem to grow. They seem to fester and grow. And just because we're BKs doesn't mean that these things don't happen. They do happen because we have old sanskaras. Mm. But if we just sort of leave them be, then sometimes I think they just fester and grow. So I think we... The thing about differences, they will happen. I think it's naive to think everything should be perfect. They will happen. That's not the problem. It's how we deal with them. And if we don't deal with them properly, then they tend to create discontentment. People create groups and things like this. So we have to listen to complaints. And so we, if there's a formal system, you know, if people have a complaint about something and then there's always two sides to a story. Some people just always complain about everything. You know, they just, that's the nature. So that's on the other side of the story too. So there has to be, um, you know, like even I found the police these days, they're so clever, at astute in asserting which complaint is real and what's not. 
You know, sometimes some people yeah. complain about their neighbours. They just know this person's a chronic complainer and they don't take much notice of it, you know. So I think there's a balance of absolutely everything, but I think the family knows on our website, I know in Australia, in the UK, etc. if the public has a complaint, there's a place they can register it. And occasionally they do. They have a complaint about what someone said in a course. I think we have to listen to this and resolve it. Otherwise, if people don't feel listened to, they get a bad impression. Yeah. Or even in the Brahmin family, if there's something that needs to be looked into, I think we have to do it. But not just an opinion. What we try to do is listen to both sides of a story and come to a really sensible conclusion that hopefully will benefit both parties. Mm. Okay. For some, uh, those who believe in Dharma, when Baba say, whatever the situation may be, you still have to look at it as a situation that's going to bring benefit for me. So let me look at it in a manner that, yeah, this is there, but isn't it telling me that why you are so weak? Why can't you become strong? Something that way is also will be able to bring them back, but it depends. Everything depends on your, your energy and when you want to solve a problem. Okay. Um, next question is, uh, this is about Murli. Uh, is correcting BK students during reading Murli a right attitude, particularly in the case of online Murli, because many other people are listening from outside. So what should, uh, when, when should correction be done? Supposing we want to tell something to somebody, when it should be done? And does correct, correcting others really help? Maybe this one, Mirabin can answer first, yeah. Yes, of course, uh, you know, when, when especially now we are aware that um, uh, on the Zoom, anybody will be listening uh, from anywhere. Uh, so it is good to have caution to uh, not to say anything that could offend anyone. But of course, if there is something that you need to talk to, you can talk to them personally. And that also, as Charlie Bai was mentioning this morning, uh, first to bring them closer and then if they have close relationship with you and they will listen to what you say, then it is possible that they listen to the correction also. And nowadays, Baba has said in the last Murli, the best way of giving correction is to forgive. Forgiveness is the correction. That is uh, to have good wishes and pure feelings for that person. But of course, uh, as much as possible, we should avoid uh, uh, correcting people, you know, while reading the Murli or on the Zoom, knowing that variety of people are listening to the Murli. It could be new, it could be old, anyone. Thank you. Do you want to add anything, Chalimba? I think, you know, I agree with Mirabhan that I think we have to move with the times, you know. Times change and sometimes what we learned years ago is not applicable now. I think, you know, I even found that um, even a lot of our seniors corrected less and less and would only correct when there was a real relationship of trust. Because if sometimes people are corrected, it can really affect their, now affect their relationship with Baba, the Yagya, everything. Mm -hmm. um, on the other hand, once again, is this balancing, we should be strong enough to listen to things. But it's a different world at the moment. So we have to really, I think, be very wise as to what we say to others. And I feel that it's okay to express, but it's the intent. And even if, let's say, you know, we're giving a class and people have got their 
cameras off and everything, we can lovefully say it'd be really lovely to see your faces, but if people don't put on their cameras, that's, that's the way it is. We have to accept. We make effort for outcomes, but we have to accept what is. And to me, I think one of the, mo the deepest concepts Baba speaks about is number-wise. It's not a judgment at all. It's not a judgment. It's the reality of life. Everyone is different. And so a wise person knows how to meet everybody at an appropriate level. There's some who really love you to really tell them the truth so that they can really progress or how you see it. There's others who just feel too sensitive or that's too much. And so we have to be wise enough to know the sort of personality, the sanskaras, and know how to deal with all types of people. Mm. Yeah. I also feel that the most important thing is uh, love. With love, you can win people's heart. And with love, when you are giving advice, they will uh, accept willingly. Uh, that's one thing. Second thing, another way of looking at it is that if somebody is correcting it, they look at it as they are doing it with the intention to help myself, to do good to me. But maybe that person do not know how to tell lovingly. You know, sometimes some people, they cannot speak softly. Everything they speak will be very loud, no? So when they are speaking loudly, we think that, why is this person angry? But the reality is, the person is like that. If we can take like that, then we can also sort of um, go through this process. Huh? In Australia, I, I've been few times to Australia. Those who are reading Murli in Australia, they just read Murli. They don't say too much in between. <laughs> <laughs> Um, that's a question. <laughs> There's extension for you to say something. <laughs> yeah, I think, you know, probably the main reason is something very practical because the majority work mm -hmm. and they want to listen to the Moli before they go to work. So we respect that it's God's words that are more important than our words. So, but, you know, um, when we have guests, we always want them to give a class at Moli. I sometimes do on a Sunday and others, etc. but not too long normally, not too long, just essenceful. Um, yeah. So. Okay, now uh, next let's move to how to work together mm. as a team. Um, the question is, why is it important to listen to and understand a problem or a situation fully before suggesting a solution? maybe. Yeah, it, it makes sense, you know, you, you listen to the full story, so then you know the, the beginning, middle and end, so then you are able to assess properly and then give your advice accordingly. But sometimes it does happen that some souls beat around the bush a lot. <laughs> you know, they will take a small thing, one hour to explain, once in a while, if that is the situation, so then we may have to interrupt and ask them what really you want to say. <laughs> you know, some people have the habit of making a molehill into a mountain, <laughs> beating around the bush. So if that is the situation, we have to look at our value of the time and then ask them to say what really they want to say, you know, in essence, so that we can understand and help them. Would you like yeah. that? No. <clears throat> yes, I think <clears throat> one thing I've learned is that one has to listen to all parties concerned because, you know, sometimes someone will come and share something and perhaps we become a little bit influenced by their perspective. So we get a 
we're coloured about the other party. But I think it's um, so important to listen to all parties concerned in a fair way to be as detached as possible. It's not easy sometimes to, you know, people have different perspectives on life. It's natural. And in some ways they're both right and they're both wrong in that way. And um, But I think it's often more not so much the solution but how we deal with them and really encourage people to take responsibility for themselves <clears throat> because our deepest habit is to be influenced by others. It's such a profoundly deep habit. And ultimately, yes, the other party may be behaving inappropriately sometimes and maybe something has to be said, but still I've got to learn how to not be so influenced by others and their behaviour. Because ultimately that's purity. To me, impurity is all about influence. The more impurity I have, I'm affected by people's drishti, people's words, people's behaviour, people's opinions, all these sorts of things. And um, so, but I do feel that one really has to have an objective view to listen to all parties and really, um, you know, I think a few times the, where I am is that if there is a real difference between a few people, I ask, there's a few sisters who are very skilled in this and they will talk to both parties and come to a real conclusion, I think, and that they both feel is fair. And then we both make suggestions to how both of them can improve their own attitude and also, you know, learn things so that we do it in a, with a lot of respect because differences will emerge. It's a part of life. Mm. Uh, I also feel that, um, you know, some people, they just do not know how to go to the, the, the issue straight away. They will describe many things, and from the description, we are to come to a conclusion, your issue is this. And when we tell them that, they will feel very happy. Oh, this is my issue. And, and so if we, we talk to them lovingly, they, are, uh, they, will, they will accept. You know? And, and the to listening to what people have to say for a long time is an investment on them. Because then they will listen to you and they will open up to you and they will actually change. Of course, not all cases may be like that, but at least my input is whenever somebody is coming with some problem, did I provide them enough time and right situation so that they are happy that I really, I'm really very interested in solving their problem. I think from the responses, few questions are automatically answered. So <laughs> I, <laughs> I will skip such questions. Um, many, uh, many youth sisters are keen to move to center to the service. They want to surrender without knowing the real meaning of surrender. How do we bring them closer? Can we invite them to stay overnight uh, in the weekends at centers, retreat centers, and, and engage them in activities and build such close spiritual relationship? So this, this is, um, you know, because they don't understand, let them come closer for a while and they really uh, begin to see what are the challenges in surrender, whether I'm really ready to surrender. So when they live in the center for a while, they can see what is happening in the center and they can make assessment whether they are ready to move to center. 
Um, maybe um, Chaliba and Miraman can add. Chaliba <laughs> got a lot of experience in Australia. <laughs> <laughs> so Chaliba can share. <clears throat> yeah, I think what we do these days is, um, you know, I think we need help in centres. The whole fundamental foundation of the Yagya Baba system is to create centres and we need those people <clears throat> to be there 24-7, to really, you know, do those, that hard work. You know, only when you live in the centre do you realise how much there is to do. I have so much admiration for all the, the centre wasis, but I think it's best to do a trial these days, maybe for three months or six months, and to be that open that, See how you go, and if you if you like it, and the people in the centre are happy, you can continue. But if it's not your thing, that's also okay. So they have they don't feel a failure because sometimes if they try it and they don't feel that it really works for them, because what I've learned is that Baba uses all his instruments. Some do amazing service by the, through their profession, being in the workforce. Some do amazing service. Be, you know, being a family member and supporting the centre. You know, some do service by being a right hand of a centre, living close by, and others do it in the centre. All roles are good. Um, but in saying that, I think we really need help in centres. And, um, yeah, and I think because there's less young people around these days, we should really value them a lot you know i was a part of a meeting of the world parliament of religions some, some it's about 10 years ago now but it was really interesting we we met a huge group of people from all faith traditions all of them said very few young people come to our group so it's not just in the brahma kumaris it's a worldwide thing and most of them said unless they're born into it their parents are involved very few join out of their own will so there's something about organised groups that younger people find hard to access. So I think, I think we really have to be very supportive and very encouraging, you know, to help them because actually, you know, when we do have more help in centres, especially younger people, you know, what's the future? We need people to look after our, our centres. And I think that, um, yeah, we should encourage a lot. One thing uh, I, I find uh, amongst young people is that um, they don't want to give up their lucky job, you know. Uh, so uh, according to Yakya system, we have checked with Dr. Nirmala uh, that if anybody would like to be on a trial even for three months, as Charlie Bai says, six months, they should be without job. They should be totally dedicated so that they can experience what is centre life. If they are going to work from staying here, it's no point. <laughs> Their intellect or working from here is not allowed. So if young people are really interested to experiment on a trial, so three months totally only for Baba, you know, what is center life? What is surrender? What it means to be dedicated? Then you can experience. But if there is working from home, working from here, or doing logic studies, so two things cannot happen. That is why I think uh, young people are hesitating, uh, you know, like they want to earn their income, they want their comfort zone, they want their own freedom. Uh, so, and then of course, you need to also let go of the attachment with the parents' uh, attachment with your own self. So, actually, if someone is really uh, prepared to let go of all that and offer themselves that they will really want to try for three months, six months, totally only Baba service, then we are happy to have them. But we don't, we haven't seen anyone of that kind. <laughs> so even now you can think about it. <laughs> so 
So then only, you know, you can experiment with different departments and experiment with different duties in the yajna, what it means to be uh, a centavasi. <laughs> That's how it's done in India also. After training, they are sent on a trial, you know, for six months to experiment, no job. On a six months, on a trial, without job, locking job, study, to stay in a center, to experience center life. Then after that only, they will accept them as a center vasi. And if one of those precious souls does have a go, try, I personally try to sit with them as much as possible to listen to them, to encourage them, because it is an adjustment. Yeah. So rather than just sort of expect them to land on their feet, we really have to spend time with them and help them understand the centre mariadas, the centre systems, yeah. the yagya systems. But sometimes I say to people, you know, one thing is to be a Brahmin is the greatest fortune, but to really give your life at the end of the cycle to God's task, there can be no greater fortune in eternity, but you have to be strong. You have to be strong. You have to have a resilience in yourself as well. So, but really when you think, I have a feeling when, when service started in Malaysia, in Australia, everyone surrendered, didn't they? Yeah. Just <laughs> everyone <laughs> surrendered. Yeah. And in most of the countries in the world, it's still that same generation running the centres. They're in their 60s and 70s. Yeah. But I think what's going to happen, it will go back to that, in the next few years because people are seeing there's nothing out there, there's nothing in the world. And I found there's some of the Brahmins in Australia who lived in centres, they moved out of centres for work and just have a bit of, you know, an easier life, if I can say that, a bit more space, as Mira Ben was saying, but now they're asking to move back again. And actually it's really good because they're so experienced, they're so experienced and they have a lot of you know, the original yagya systems and customs and experience. So I think it's going to change around again. Maybe I'm hopeful. <laughs> I'm always an optimist. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I am very happy to invest my time if there is some volunteer young people, especially sisters who would really want to come forward to offer themselves six months, no logic job, no logic study, totally in the center. We are very happy to spend, invest our time to train you and to, to really, um, you know, allow you to become what you want, Baba wants you to become. So it's up to you to offer yourself. Um, just two points. Uh... When, when I came to Baba, I was working. I didn't surrender myself straight away. And then at that time in foreign country, they wanted people who, get, who got job. Because without uh, the center being in a position to have income, uh, we cannot run the center. So therefore working people were accepted and then, <laughs> of course, the, when they accept, it was it's based on a, a proper assessment of the of the person. Will as he is now, will he be able to be? Has he got the right attitude to learn to bring a change in himself and be able to deal with people and be able to be responsible? I think based on that principle only many of were pulled were invited to move to center. Uh, so that I'm just I was just looking at that point. Maybe you know somebody has to be trained gradually because nowadays um, uh, there's, uh, there's a lot of pull from outside, and there are some people who are as Mirabena also said that they got the distaste of uh, going out there and work in that environment. Uh, today no, I I worked for eleven years <laughs> and helped. In the center for 11 years, I worked and then it just got too much, so I stopped. But I also, I think um, even Baba used to encourage us all in foreign to do the double service. Yeah. 
there's a very full life when you work all day and come back. It's like doing two jobs. <laughs> but opposite to Chandi, Bhai, I never worked even a single day. <laughs> <laughs> So this Not way. even a single day. <laughs> totally only Baba and Baba alone. That was my decision. Not anybody. I could have, because when I met Sakar Baba, when my father asked Sakar Baba, Baba gave uh, permission that I can do Laukik job and stay at the center. But that was my personal decision. I did not want to work. So I had hands up. So Baba took care. <laughs> You know, nowadays, those days, the job that one person can do in the center, the center I see, now we need three people to do that same job because people don't, <laughs> don't want to do too much work. But that is the situation. So we have to have uh, more people who are, who are uh, we need more people to do karma, uh, yakya seva and all that. So that's one of the view. Um, let's move to the next one. We have five minutes, huh? 6.30. Five we'll, more minutes? Oh, yeah. Well, we have 6.30, 6.25 now. Okay, yeah. then I look for the right questions. Yeah. Could you share something about your current efforts that would inspire us? Ch Charlie, why? <laughs> um, <clears throat> I've been sharing a little bit, I think, during COVID. I suppose I just looked at my whole Brahman life and what I need. And, you know, I just went to the basics. I need to remember Baba more. And I've really tried to pay much more attention as to where my intellect goes. And life means that there's situations, life means there's problems, but not to give too much intellectual time to that, to keep my intellect more with Baba. So I love that when Baba in the Sakamoni says, make a habit of remembrance. So what I've been trying to do is, you know, when the mind is a bit free, all those little moments like we finish the class and we walk to the dining room, what do I do? Do I, do I just let my mind wander someone's question or just, you know, no discipline in a sense, or do I go to Baba, go to Baba, go to Baba? I honestly believe if I do that intensely for a few months, it becomes a habit in all those moments during the day to really go to Baba. And that's the ultimate destiny of this life is to, really spend my life with Baba and remember Baba. So that's been my main thing. But the second thing I think is, you know, just to have a benevolent attitude. It's at the end of the cycle and Baba's sanskara is the benefactor. So his children's sanskara should be the centre. Just to <coughs> not be too judgmental. It's a variety drama and have benevolent feelings for everybody. Mm. So for me, actually, I, I have been focusing a lot on practicing, uh, you know, soul consciousness in several ways, at least seven methods, because every time you can't use the same thought, so sometimes it could be bodiless state, sometimes incorporeal state, sometimes be dehi state, sometimes seed state. So I find uh, because it, according to, it comes naturally. Uh, so it becomes very focused. Uh, so I can go into that experience immediately without making or effort, you know, struggling for that, because uh, I think that is like uh, two things. Uh, my practice is one to remain more in my eternal form, eternal stage. And then if not eternal, then original, original stage. 
So I take two things. One is eternal state means being master almighty authority, just in the soul world, point of light. And then in original stage is actually all virtuous, whatever, when you come onto this earth to play the part. So I, I give quality time, attention, practice. Attention, practice. As Charlie Bai said, every time, like say, if I walk from my room to come to the class, so when I'm walking, I check my thoughts, what stage of soul consciousness I am practicing now. Not just like keep the mind white, you know, anywhere you are going anywhere. So there is always some practice. So that actually empowers the soul. And so when you want to meditate for a long period of time, that power that is being accumulated makes it very easy. And uh, I also give a quality time to, to serve, you know, serve the elements of matter, to serve, give sakash to the souls, mostly in the evening times, mostly because that is the time when all souls are returning, birds and animals and everyone returning to their homes. So it's a good time to also allow myself with that power of Sakash to inspire souls. So I enjoy morning. I always use it for energizing myself, evening to serve the world. Uh, for me, um, I want to be very focused in this spiritual life. Always, always, um, you know, focus on concentration. Um, so, for, uh, to 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 concentrate, I have to focus. So, let that always be there. And second thing is. To be a feelingsful person, because the maximum energy is in being feeling feelings, and tap from the feelings. So these two, I always make it as a um, guide for progressing in spiritual life. Okay, thanks so much uh, to Charlie Bai and Miraben, and uh, I'm sure all of you benefited from this discussion. Yeah, okay. Give a big clap for resource persons. Om Chanti. I think today's uh, World Peace Hour, they asked us to focus, uh, to sit ourselves as ancestor souls. Something was written in the Murli today, you know, serving the souls of the whole world. In a way, holding the seed and serving the world. So either you can see yourself sitting under the kalpa tree, serving the whole world, or you can see yourself in the soul world where the incorporated tree is upside down there. So you are, you are sitting with the seed and connect with the seed, drawing that energy from Baba and let that energy reach every leaf, every branch of the tree. So either way, it is um, holding, the tr holding the seed and serving the tree. We are ancestor souls. We are worship worthy souls. Souls are searching for us. We don't think about one particular country because the whole world is in chaos. So when we go beyond this corporeal world, so we are in the soul world. Huh? So for us, the, the whole world is like one globe. So we just sit with Baba, connect with the satellite and let Baba do the magic to the world. So if all of us can have that same thought, the power of thoughts will work wonders. Okay. Om Shanti.